algorithms. We have lot of problems in this world. We have lot of problems. Now we looked at uh, solving the problem. We we first analyze, then design the solution, then test it, then write about it. That is one case. But any problem, the real life problem, how do you? What is your first approach? towards solving the problem. If the problem is very big, the easiest way to solve that problem is to break it. So break it and and, and solve it step by step. Step by step. This makes the complexity of such a huge problem come down to small steps. And you can always solve step by step a huge problem one at a time and then combine these steps to build a solution for that huge problem. So step by step solving is a proven method in real life and also a proven method in computer science too. And this step by step solving of a problem, this step by step solution of a problem is nothing but algorithm. So let me repeat it again. An algorithm is nothing but a step-by-step -step solution for a problem. It is not a program, it is just a step-by-step -step solution of a problem. We do follow algorithms in our real life too. For example, let's take an example of making tea. There is an algorithm for making tea, right? First is warm a little water, right? For making tea you need water. The second step is you add sugar into that little water. The third step is after adding sugar you add tea you add tea leaves and the fourth step is after the sugar and the tea dissolves you add milk and the final step is nothing but you filter and serve right this is a simple algorithm for making tea. We love tea, right? We now take a serious example. A mathematical example. Which number is greater? We have to do nothing. We have to take two numbers. We have to determine which is greater. A is greater or B is greater. Such a simple solution for this problem. So we have two numbers A and B. First of all, the first and the foremost thing you need to do is to take that input. You need to ask for two numbers. So you take input. You take input A and B. The second step you do is to check whether A is greater or B is greater. If A is greater, if A is greater than B, then tell that A is greater. So we print A is greater. If not, that is else, else it means that P is greater, else print that P is greater. And then the final thing you do is to stop, right? You stop after after checking and after printing all other stuff, you stop after that. Let us write the characteristics of algorithm.
characteristics of algorithms. The first characteristic is input. The second characteristic is output. Let me list the characteristics first, then I'll explain. The third characteristic, finiteness. Finiteness. The fourth characteristic is definiteness. And the final fifth characteristic is effectiveness. Now let us explain, let us learn what these means the characteristic of algorithm. The input is what you take input from the user or from some uh, another source. So the input for an algorithm should be zero or more. The algorithm may take or may not take any input but it should, pro it should provide at least one output. At least one the output should be at least one. The algorithm should be finite. It should end. It should not continue. It should not con continue for infinite time. Right? It should end. Definite means that all the statements you do in the algorithm should make some sense. They, they should not be confusing. The statements in an algorithm should not be confusing. The statements must not be confusing. The last characteristic is effectiveness. The algorithm should be effective. It should do some work. It should do some work. So, these were the characteristics of algorithms. Now we move on to the final part of the, our lecture which is flowcharts. Flowcharts are very simple. The previous part was algorithms. In algorithms we wrote our steps. In flowcharts we draw an algorithm. Flowchart is nothing but diagram of an algorithm. Let us take the same example, the mathematical example which we wrote the algorithm about. The which number is greater. A or B. Let us change colors now. Which is greater? So we have to first start. To do anything, we need to start, right? Then what we did is we took input A or B, A and B. We need the values of A and B, right? To check them, we need some values. So we took input A and B. So take input A and B. So we are drawing an algorithm right here. Then we checked whether A is greater than B or B is greater than A. Then we checked is A greater than B? If A is greater than B, yes, A is greater than B, then we print A is greater. If our assumption that is A greater than B was wrong, the condition A is greater than B, is A is greater than B was wrong, that is false, then we print B is greater. If A is not greater than B, then it means that B is greater. And after that, we need to stop. But, 
we are stopping after printing b is greater but what about if the control goes here if a is greater than b if a is greater indeed then it goes here print a is greater then we need to stop after this also so we connect it here so this is nothing but a flow chart and these and a flow chart always gives the flow of process that's why it is called flow chart it gives the flow where the control goes what which statement is executed if there is some condition it shows everything so this is a flow chart now a flow chart has to be drawn it is a graphical representation of an algorithm and as it is a graphical representation there are some graphics involved in it there are symbols like this is a symbol this is a parallelogram this is a diamond this is an arrow so there are symbols involved in a flow chart so we now look at the various symbols that are involved in a flow chart what are the symbols involved in a flow chart so first of all we had a start or stop symbol right so it is represented as oval start or stop is represented as oval when an algorithm starts when an algorithm ends that is an oval if you have some input or some output so that is represented as a parallelogram input or output by a parallelogram and then if you have some process you represent it it as a rectangle another symbol involved is a diamond we used the diamond in the previous flow chart to check decisions is a diamond diamond another in uh, another graphic involved is a hexagon for loops for now remember that hexagon is used to represent loops loops is nothing but a part of a program where a where some statements are executed again and again that are called loops we'll study what are loops in later lectures but for now re remember that loops are represented using a hexagon and if you run out of space some sometime it happens that a flow chart is so big that a page is not enough to accommodate it so if you run out of space no problem you can connect a flow chart so you so draw some flow chart at at some part of page and in the next page connect it using a circle connector using a circle and we saw that a flow chart gives the flow of process and that flow of process was represented by arrows and if you have some predefined process we'll learn what a predefined process is but for now a predefined process is anything which is already defined in the language so this this predefined process is represented by this structure i don't know what this structure is but this structure represents predefined process so this these are the symbols of a flow chart now flow charts have advantages the biggest advantage is advantages the biggest advantage is it is programming language independent
it is programming language independent this means that you can translate a flowchart in any programming language you want it is not dependent on any program any programming language if you build a flowchart you can implement that flowchart in c if you want you can implement the same flowchart in c++ there is no binding between any language and a flowchart and the biggest advantage of a flowchart is that it is very easy to understand and to implement because graphics because pictures make more sense than words and it's a proven fact right so it is easy to understand and implement so that's all we have